Hello and welcome to the channel IT Simplified. Hope you're finding these sessions useful and subscribing to the channel. In today's video in Azure, I'm here to talk about Recovery Service Vault, Backup Vault, and Backup Center. Now, all these services might seem uh, similar, so I thought maybe there's a confusion in the market what each service does, so I thought I will take a session on this. So today we'll look them one by one and also see how and where to find this service on the Azure portal. So let's start with Recovery Service Vault. And uh, if you've been using uh, Azure, it should sound familiar to you because if you're deploying any workload, uh, you are using Recovery Service Vault in order to backup and restore. Not only from the backup and restore perspective, if you are using maybe a business continuity solution like Azure Site Recovery, Recovery Service Vault is the answer for that. So what Recovery Service Vault actually protects you? So if you've been using uh, the service, you can use this to protect your Azure VMs. If you have deployed uh, SQL Server on Azure VM, you can uh, use this service too. And some of the other workloads which comes to my mind is file storage, which is a PaaS offering, uh, SAP HANA. So any of these workloads, if you're using, then you can definitely uh, use Recovery Service Vault in order to protect it. So it gives you one single interface where you can manage all these and uh, you can pick whatever redundancy you want. You can pick a locally redundant, which keeps the data within one region, or you can have a geo-redundant, which will keep the data between two regions, so three copies in each region. So this is what Recovery Service Vault does. So where do you find the service on the Azure portal? So let me just go to the portal, which I'm already logged in. And uh, you can just do a quick search for the service. And creating this is pretty straightforward. You can just go and click on Add New. And you just need to provide the subscription, what resource group you want to put in, provide the what name and your region that you want to deploy. Now what I did is I've already deployed one with the name Recovery Vault. And uh, you can see that uh, one interface, you can do backup, you can enable site recovery. If you look on the left, left side of this uh, blade, I can go under the protected items, go and expand backup items. And uh, right now I'm, I've not protected any of the workloads, so you'll see zero. But you can see that I can use this to protect SAP HANA, SQL in Azure, Azure Files. And even if you're using, say, for example, if you have on-prem environment, you can use the same interface, basically, to download the agents uh, that you want to use to protect those kind of scenarios. So you have this Getting Started button. I can go to Backup, and it will ask you, where is your workload running, whether it's in Azure, Azure Stack, on-prem, and if it is running on Azure, you see all these workload, virtual machine, file share, SQL server, SAP HANA in Azure VM, you can utilize the service. And if you have, say, Azure Stack, or even if you have on-prem environment, you can uh, specify if you have virtualized or physical server, right, what you want to protect, and it will guide you to prepare the infrastructure. So basically, you need to download the agent, or if you want to full-fledged uh, protection enablement, then you need to download the Azure Backup Server on-prem, which can be on a physical or on a virtualized environment. So you see Recovery Service Vault give you a central place where you can manage all these resources. And uh, even for site recovery, if you're using Azure Site Recovery, it will give you all the options, whether you're protecting Azure Virtual Machines or if you have uh, Hyper-V or VMware or even physical environment, you can use this service to protect it. So this was the uh, recovery service vault. Uh, now let's look at the backup vault. Now you must have noticed that uh, Azure keeps on adding more and more services. And uh, some of the services might not be covered within recovery service vault from the data management perspective. So when we talk about backup vault, this can be used to protect Azure disks if you're using. Azure Storage,
and also PostgreSQL. So the idea here is that uh, the options which are not covered with the recovery service vault, you can use backup vault to protect it. And you might be thinking that uh, why I need to protect Azure Storage, it's a pass offering, it's highly available. So that is correct. Microsoft will make sure that uh, your uh, services are highly available and it can be even replicated between multiple region, but it won't protect you from accidental deletion and uh, corruption of data. So definitely you want to have some sort of service in order to protect it. And that is what back of vault will protect you. And uh, let's go to the portal and to find the service, I can just type in back of vault. I already have one created. If you want to create a new, it's pretty straightforward, very similar to Recovery Service Vault, in which you go to the basic tab, subscription resource group, what kind of redundancy you want, the name of the backup vault, and if you want to tag it. Uh, so I've already created one. And you can see here that uh, I don't have any of the workload that I'm just uh, protecting, but uh, you can use this for protecting your uh, PostgreSQL, Azure Disk, Azure Blob Storage, all these options will be there for you. And uh, if I go and click on the backup button, you can see these are the three options it will cover only. So those things which were not part of the recovery service vault, the disk, the Blob Storage, and the PostgreSQL, you can see it's in preview right now, you can do that. And you can also pick what kind of redundancy you want. You can specify uh, what policy you, you want to apply to this, right? You can do, you have this option of uh, generating alerts, tracking the backup jobs, and you can also restore the data. So this is uh, where you'll be able to protect those workloads which are not part of Recovery Service Vault. So this was uh, Backup Vault. And then what is Backup Center basically, right? So as you know that your data might span across multiple subscriptions. So say for example, if you have, if you are an organization which have multiple subscription, right? Uh, it can be within one tenant, so I can have uh, multiple subscription or if you have multiple tenants, right? Uh, and you want to protect it and want to have a single interface Backup center is the answer for that because this will give you single pane of glass from where you can manage all the vaults, whether it's a recovery service vault, backup vault, it gives you one single pane of glass where you can manage. And if you have already onboarded your customers to the Lighthouse, uh, as I said that it will span across uh, subscription. And it can be within one tenant or across multiple tenants. That's the beauty of the backup center. So one place you can go, it will, you'll see all, uh, all your uh, vault over there. And if you want to see where the service you can find, you can just go to and type in backup center. And this way you find your backup center. So there is no specific charge for this backup center, but underlining, if you're using recovery service vault or the backup vault and the storage associated with that, you'll be charged for that one. So you can see you have this button for backup, you have the button for restore, you can apply policy and you can apply filters. So you can see right now, in my case, I only have one subscription, but if you have multiple subscription, you can select all of them. You can also filter based on the data source resource group. So you might be having multiple resource group. You want to drill down into a specific one. You can do that. If you have a deployment across multiple location, you can also trim it down based on specific locations you want. And for the data source type, as you can see that this covers everything. So whatever was in the recovery service vault, as well as on the backup vault, you can filter your view based on that. And the last option is the vault. So you can see it includes the recovery service vault, the backup vault, so whatever vaults you have, doesn't matter the workload, you'll be able to see. And then you can manage your backup instances. You can apply backup policy. 
you can do monitoring and reporting so you can drill down into the backup jobs right uh, if you already have uh, onboarded uh, maybe if you want to create reports or generate reports you can send the data to uh, a specific log analytic workspace and then you can further drill down into what was successful what was not what kind of usage is that right you can send the reports to that and then you can apply policy and compliance but the idea here is that let me just go back to the overview button. One single interface will give you your protection across all the different vaults and maybe with, this is within one subscription or across multiple subscription. Backup center will cover for all those kind of scenario. So you can see that though these services seems pretty similar, they cover different kind of workloads and have different purpose. It is good to have combination of all of them in case you have a different kind of workload, but this backup center will give you complete visibility across multiple subscription, multiple resource group, different resource type, and uh, you can apply policies, run backup and restore from one pane of glass. So very useful for the backup admin. So this was a quick overview of what recovery service vault, backup vault and backup center can do for you. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.